Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. Today we are going to talk about SAS Macro Series Part 7A and it is about macro functions and especially it is about macro coating functions. I will be also having another Part 7B which is again also related to macro functions but everything other than macro coating functions. Macro coating function is often a complicated topic and it is sometimes very difficult even to understand. So I have made my efforts to make it as easy as possible but this is a little bit longer topic. Now in the macro functions we have coating functions and also other types of SAS macro functions. But for today's topic, we will be completely focusing on macro coating functions. These functions are very useful to mask special characters and mnemonics. Now let us try to understand coating functions with the help of an example. Here I have a percent LET statement wherein I am saying percent LET H equal to proc print data equal to SAS help dot class semicolon var name age semicolon run semicolon and then final semicolon for this percent LED statement. I would like to iterate one another thing which I have been telling from the very first class that everything and anything in a macro variable is nothing more than a text. And now what we are really doing here is I am trying to put a bunch of text in here and then try to run my percent LET statement. But when I run the percent LET statement, I get an error here. That error says that var is something excess in here. Means this should have ended somewhere in here. That is my percent LET statement h equal to proc print data equal to sas help dot class this should end here that is what my error is telling about what does that mean it means that this semicolon here is interpreted as end of percent let statement by microprocessor but i want this to be treated as text which means I want this also as a part of my macro variable. And also when I do my percent put, the value I see is only proc print data equal to sas help dot class. Even though I want whole of this till run semicolon to be part of my macro variable, but it is not happening. Because a macro processor is thinking that this semicolon in here should be the end of percent LET statement. What now I want to do is I want to apply some function which will tell the macro processor that this semicolon is not really the end of this percent LET statement but this is the part of text. Now let us try to do that by using percent str function. In here, I am using percent %let and I am saying h equal to percent %str and I am putting everything into parenthesis in here. That is, I am applying percent %str function on the text what I have shown you before and this final semicolon is for this percent %let statement. Now, all these semicolons are treated as text. How they are treated as text, I will go in detail into that topic also. But for now, let's try to think that this percent %str helped us to treat this semicolon as text. And when I do percent %put here, it gives me value as proc print data equal to sas help dot semicolon, var name a semicolon, run semicolon. And before going into anything else, what I would also like to say here is I have been showing you a new way of looking into macro variable. That is I am using percent put 
ambersant equal to h semicolon earlier i was just trying to use ambersant h and then looking into the log but what you can really do is you can really do percent put ambersant equal to h it will show the macro variable values as follows it tells macro variable equal to and the macro variable value this is a new way of looking into macro variable value and i think it started somewhere from sas 9.4 m4 or something of that sort and then this is easy to see in the log now let us look into our main topic what this macro coating function is doing is it is instructing macro processor to treat semicolon as text now let us look into what are the other special characters which gives us problems with macro processor like the semicolon we have seen and also after that we will look into how macro coating functions work behind the scenes now let's look into what are the characters which give us problems some of the characters which give us in the problems are shown in here those are plus minus star and forward slash and others and also some mnemonic characters also give us problems and those are and equal to greater than gt and others so what our coating functions they do is they mask the special characters which cause problems during compile and run time i will also get into what does compile and run time coating functions means but first let's quickly look into coating functions and how do they work in the earlier slide i have shown you the way we can apply a masking function that is by simply writing the name of masking function here it is percent str followed by parenthesis and whatever we want to write in here and closing the parenthesis followed by the semicolon for this particular scenario in here what macro coating function really does is it applies hexadecimal masking characters and these are also known as delta characters and later they are unmasked here we need to also understand that macro subsystem understand these special characters and they mask them here if you see that the special characters are semicolon and they are masked and also i want to tell one another thing here the beginning and ending of this whole thing is also masked but that is not important to know and i'm not going into very fine details of the masking but what i want you to understand is special characters are masked here and that is when we are applying our percent let statement what is happening is this percent let statement wherein we are saying h equal to all of these what happens is all of these semicolons are here masked so once they are masked system does not understand it or our macro processor just simply doesn't understand that as semicolon and we do not have any problem with the semicolon after masking them and i also said that once we mask these characters they are also unmasked and now let us see how we can understand that these things are also unmasked once we apply option symbol gen and then we do our percent let statement in here and after that once we do our percent put ampersand equal to h semicolon we can see a message in the log that message is some characters in the above value which were subjected to macro coating have been uncoated for printing that means the values were coated here and they were uncoated when we were doing our percent put this is very important to know 
Now let us see how we can understand this visually. This kind of visual we have seen earlier when I was discussing about introduction and also about percentility statements. Now whenever we run a piece of code, first it goes into input stack and word scanner looks into it and what it does it, it tokenizes into literal numbers, name and special tokens. Here the percentility is a special token as it has a percent symbol macro processor understands it because they are macro triggers macro processor understands it and what it does is because we have a percent str in here it stores the macro variable macvar in simple table by masking of all of these values in here and once the macro processor is done that is when we do our percent put the values are demasked and especially this is done once our macro processor work is done and here you can see that we have demasked values so the important thing to understand in here is only one that is when the macro processor is working what we are doing is we are masking those special characters which are interpreted in a wrong way by the macro processor in our case what we were discussing that as semicolons because whenever we use percentility statement semicolon is usually treated as end of that percentility statement by masking what we have done is we have not allowed this macro processor to see that semicolon. So our percentility statement has not ended here, but whole of this has been our macro variable value. This was done with the help of masking. And once the macro processor work was done, it is demasked and we can have all the values back Probably I should use the word unmasked rather than demasked. In here, what I mean to say when I say that the values are unmasked and the values are back means the values or the text which were masked, in our case semicolon, they are unmasked and they are part of the text in here. Now let us talk about different kinds of macro coding functions. If we talk about the categories, there are two categories of macro functions. The first one is compile time and the second one is runtime. Till now we were talking only about percent %str and percent %str is compile time function. And it masks all the special characters which we have earlier discussed except percent and am percent. NRSTR also masks all special characters and it also masks percent and am percent. Now coming to runtime functions, there are three of them which are important. One is percent B code. This also works very similar to percent STR, but it's more a runtime function and it masks all the special characters but it does not mask percent and ampersand nrb code masks percent and ampersand along with other special characters percent super q is very similar to percent nrb code but it has its own nuances and it is little different in here the macro variable never resolves and the way we access macro variable is also different. More on this in coming slides but for now just try to understand that percent super Q is similar to NRB code but it is little different. I have discussed only few macro coding functions. There are few more macro coding functions. I feel that these are most of the time enough to run our macro code. 
and also it is very important to understand that macro coating is often little complicated topic and its complexity often comes from the difference in compile time macro coating functions and runtime macro coating functions now let us try to understand what is the difference between compile time macro coating functions and runtime macro coating functions it is not very easy to understand the differences between the compile time and runtime macro coating function when we do it or when we try to understand it from open code whenever we create macro variables or do something which is not embedded in a macro is often known as open code now let us try to understand the differences between compile time and runtime macro coating function and then we are going to do this with the help of a macro in here i am creating a macro and i am calling it as test1 in here what i am doing is i am trying to create two macro variables the first one is s and the second one is b and here i have the same text what i have shown you previously related to proc print in here i am using percent str which is a compile time macro coating function and in the second case i am using percent b code apart from creating macro variables what i am doing is i am also trying to access these macro variables or rather i would say i am trying to see how these macro variables are stored in symbol table and i can do this by simply doing percent put underscore user underscore what this does is it shows all user defined macro variables in this macro that is we have two user defined macro variables the first one is s and the second one is b and once we run this code from percent macro to percent man this is what we call as compilation it is very important to know what happens in the compilation phase in the compilation phase what the macro processor does is it looks into macro statements as you can see there are no macro statements in here and the second one what it does is it creates all the things which are needed as text that is whenever we have any macro variable to be created in here it is created and stored in a symbol table as i said to you everything needed as text means macro variable is also nothing more than a text so once the compilation is over we can also execute our code and execution of code is done by percent test1 in here test1 is the macro we have compiled earlier and we are executing here i have a semicolon in here we do not need a semicolon for execution and this gives error more on this error in a minute but first let's look into our macro variables that are created we wanted to create s and b and we have used percent put underscore user underscore to see our macro variables how they are stored in symbol table now when we do this percent put underscore user underscore this gives our results as something as i am showing below whenever we do percent put and do something like underscore user underscore we often see three parts to it the first part is it tells the macro variable which it belongs to here the macro variable s and b belong to test1 macro and the second part is the macro variable itself third one is its value how it is stored in symbol table here you can see that s is the value of proc print data sas help dot class var name age run here there is something interesting in here you can't see the semicolons and other special characters in here because all of them are masked what does this tell us is 
परसेंट एस टी आर हैज वर्क एंड इट हैज क्रिएटेड आवर मैक्रो वेरिएबल एंड ऑल्सो इट हैज मास्क ऑल द स्पेशल कैरेक्टर्स नाउ वी डो नॉट सी एनी वैल्यू फॉर अनदर मैक्रो वेरिएबल विच वी आर क्रिएटेड बाई यूजिंग परसेंट बी कोड एंड लेट सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन हियर वाई वी डो नॉट हैव एनी वैल्यू फॉर हियर द एरर वी आर सींग comes from this percent let statement if you look into the error itself it says that expected close parenthesis after macro invocation not found so the error is saying that it expected some close parenthesis but it was not able to find one this sounds little weird but let's try to understand what it is exactly trying to say now as i said to you percent b quote is not a compile time quoting function so it does not work while we are compiling so when we apply percent b quote what is happening in here is this semicolon is not masked so percent let statement thinks that everything has ended here and it doesn't go much further to see anything in here because of which this closed parenthesis is ignored so we have an open parenthesis percent let statement as ended here we do not have a closed parenthesis and that is what this error is all about and because of this the macro variable itself is not created now we have looked into compile time functionality in a detailed manner now let us also quickly try to understand about run time functionality now again to understand this run time macro quoting function let's try to understand it through an example in here in here i am creating a macro variable in my data step wherein i am using a call input and i am saying macvar in quotes followed by comma and variable what i am trying to do is i am trying to take this variable value into my macro variable now i will explain you the run time functionality with the help of two macros the first one is macro test3 and second one is macro test 4 in test 4 i am using percent str whereas in test 3 i am using percent b code before going into the details again i want to remind you that percent b code is a run time macro quoting function percent str is compile time macro quoting function now let me explain things through test 4 macro in here what i am trying to do here is i am trying to use my percent if statement and trying to compare this macvar value with another text the macro variable as i said to you is nothing more than a text so what happening in here is when i run this macro that is during compilation phase what happens is this percent if percent then statements are checked for syntax and as we do not have any macro variables to be created nothing else happens in the compilation phase and when i execute this macro percent test 4 what happens is this becomes percent if and here i have a caret symbol as my macro variable here what happens is percent if caret symbol equal to j percent then percent put ampersand macvar percent else percent put ampersand macvar so what is happening in here is this percent if and this caret symbol once it resolves equal to j it will become so caret generally means a not symbol so so whole of this thing becomes not equal to j 
but if you look into there is nothing to compare in here so it thinks that i am saying percent if not equal to j and then do something here or else do here so what i wanted to be compared as a text is becoming a problem for me because here it is picked up as a symbol and it becomes not equal to j but there is nothing to compare over here so i get an error this is because while executing this macro only this functionality works and while executing percent str will not work because it works only during compilation phase again during compilation phase two things generally happen that is checking of macro syntax and also if there are any macro variables they are created nothing of that sort is there during compilation only during execution we are having a problem because during execution this not equal to or caret symbol is treated as a symbol rather than text now i have the same code in here but now i have percent b code now again we compile there is not much to do during compilation phase there are no macro variables to be created and nothing to be done of that sort and only the syntax is checked while executing that is my run time functionality comes into picture this percent b code what it does is it masks this special character during execution phase or we can say while this macro variable is getting resolved and this helps us to compare this caret symbol as text with the value or text j as they are not equal to this percent l statement works and then what it does is it puts this value of macro variable equal to ambers and macvar in the log and you can see the same result in here to sum it up we can say that compile time macro quoting functions generally work during compilation phase whereas run time macro quoting function generally work during execution of the macro or while resolving of macro variable and in here i want to add one more point that is run time macro functions work pretty late whereas compile time functions are applied as early as possible now that we have understood about compile time and run time and we also have looked into special characters now let us quickly focus on mnemonic operators this is not very different than special characters but i just wanted to deal with this topic so that it looks complete now in here i have a macro in here in here in this macro what i am doing is i am saying percent if am percent state equal to ny percent then percent put this is ny state else percent put am percent state here in this macro i have also have a parameter where in i am saying state equal to if i pass state equal to or during my execution what happens in here is or can be treated as an operator that is when or is treated as an operator what happens in here is this code becomes percent if or equal to ny this or is treated as regular or operator so after percent if we are directly going to or and there is nothing to compare in here because this or is an operator that's why we get an error so this or which is treated as mnemonics 
if we do a percent b code while executing what happens is this or is masked and it will be treated as text and now we are comparing or equal to ny as text actually or means origin and now what we are doing is we are comparing text or with ny because of percent b code doing the masking now as this is not equal to this else statement runs again this is something we have earlier seen also it is just that now we are talking about mnemonics now let us talk about nr coding functions nr here means no rescan or no resolve again we have three types of nr functions the first one is percent nr str it masks all the special characters along with percent and ampersand and this is a compile time function so you can think this as an extension of percent str and runtime nr functions are of two types the first one is nrb code another is percent super q here again these are not the only ones i am just discussing what i feel are important in here we are talking about percent nrb code and percent super q nrb code is kind of extension of percent b code and super q is a little different and both of these are runtime coding functions that to nr coding functions these three nr macro coding functions are very different and the way they work is also different so i would like to discuss each one of them separately and also i want you to remember one important point this percent nr str percent nr b code or percent super q mostly we use when we want to mask percent or ampersand symbols in here i want to tell one another thing for most of the examples which precede now i will be discussing only for ampersand symbol first let's start with percent nr str again the important point here to remember is how these three are different and i am not going to talk about compile time functionality and runtime functionality we have gone into that in much larger detail but the focus is mainly on how these three are very different and how we can use them as per our requirement now first let's start with percent nr str and this we can do with the help of an example in this example in here i am using a title and in here i am saying quotes this is percent nr str and then open parenthesis ampersand state close parenthesis and then quotes semicolon and i have my proc print statement in here once i run this whole of this code what happens is the result will be shown as follows here we have our proc print result and also you can see that our title is this is ampersand sys date if you remember ampersand sys date is a automatic macro variable which is system date in date 7 format and percent nr str what it does is it masks this ampersand immediately so that this value is never resolved that means this macro variable is never resolved because this ampersand is immediately masked so that is the reason we see the value or the title as this is ampersand sys date so this is the important thing to know about percent nr str that is macro coding is applied immediately and no macro variable is ever resolved and now let us look into one example where this can be useful for us again 
I have same proc print. And here my title says this class consists of boys. And in here I am using percent %nrstr on ampersand girls. In here actually I do not have macro variable girls and I am applying percent %nrstr. If I don't apply percent %nrstr, the macro processor will look into this macro variable and will give us a warning saying that girls macro variable was not found and by applying percent %nrstr this ampersand is masked immediately and this value of macro variable is never looked upon and we do not have any warning. Now let us look into percent %nrb code. Percent %nrb code is a runtime macro coding function and it tries to resolve ampersand and percent once then it masks the resolved value. Now let's look into an example to understand this better. In here I am doing a percent put with a bunch of text and then I am using percent %nrb code and then I am using it on ampersand sys date. And when I run this piece of code, this is what I see in the log. In here, you can see that ampersand sys date has resolved. And now the macro coding function is applied on the resolved value. Now, I would want you to understand the difference between percent %nrstr and percent %nrb code. Here, the main difference is percent %nrstr is applied immediately and mask this ampersand immediately so this value never resolves so whenever i say the coating function is applied and masking is done what is really happening is we are masking the special characters and making them to be treated as text rather than special characters in here ampersand is a macro trigger and what we are trying to do here is we are telling macro system that this is not a ampersand it's a plain text don't treat this as macro trigger and that is what percent nrstr is doing immediately whereas in the case of nrb code the masking happens after the value is resolved now let us look into one last macro coding function that is percent super q. This is a runtime macro coding function and this also masks percent and ampersand. And here one important thing to know is it masks the macro variable reference within a specified macro variable. What does this sentence mean? We will look into it in a minute. But First, let us see how we are going to use super queue. Here, I am creating a macro variable using calls input wherein we have created macro variable my macvar and it has a value of hello world. Here, I am using percent put percent super queue my macvar and then once I run this, this is what I see in the log. Now, this looks very similar to nrp code but i want you to look into one important thing is whenever we use percent super q we are not going to use ampersand so we are referencing our macro variable without ampersand that is the speciality of percent super q that is the first speciality of super q whenever you want to use percent super q we are not going to use any ampersand on the macro variable. And in here, as we have used percent super q, the macro variable value got resolved. So we get an impression that this is very similar to percent nrb code, but it is not. And let's look ahead to understand it more. Now, I'm again creating a macro variable. And in here, I am doing calls input and I am creating a macro variable macvar and it has the value of Tom, Ambers and Jerry. Ambers and in general means and for us, right? But 
Once I do percent put percent super Q mac var and run this percent put statement, what will happen is we will see Tom and Jerry. What is a great thing about this? In here, we do not have Jerry as macro variable. And as I said to you earlier in the definition, that it masks macro variable reference within a specified macro variable, which means it masks this ampersand. Within the macro variable, we have Tom and Jerry as the value. So it masks this ampersand and when we run this, we do not get any warning saying that the Jerry macro variable was not there. So it mask this value. Now let us try to compare with percent NRB code and try to understand this little bit more. In here again I am creating a macro variable and this macro variable is word and the value it will have is Ben and Jerry and I am using percent put percent NRB code ampersand word then what happens in here is whenever I run this percent %nrb code, as I said to you, it tries to resolve ampersands at least once. So what happens is it looks into macro processor and it tries to find whether there is an ampersand jerry or not and it gives as a warning apparent symbolic reference jerry not resolved. Whereas in the case of percent put percent super Q and word, what happens is we get the value of Ben and Jerry in the log, but we do not have a warning. Why don't we have a warning? Because percent super Q will not look into macro variable reference within a macro variable. Now, this is an important thing to remember. So, if we have to sum it up between percent %nrb code, percent %nrstr and percent super Q, we can think of this as follows. Percent %nrstr macro variable is never resolved. Whereas in the case of percent %nrb code, all the macro variable references will be resolved and the masking happens on the resolved value. So everything is resolved once at least. Whereas in the case of super Q, it resolves only the macro variable, any ampersand references within the macro variable are not resolved. Now let us enhance this comparison of percent super Q with NRB code and then we will finish this topic. In here I have percent let Jerry equal to Jamin. Means I am creating a new variable Jerry and it has Jamin. Again I have same data step wherein I am creating my macro variable word and the macro variable is Ben and Jerry. In here I'm using percent put percent NRB code ampersand word. What happens is as NRB code always try to resolve ampersands at least once, what it does is first it resolves to Ben and Jerry. And as ampersand Jerry has a macro variable in here, which has the value of Jamin, so it becomes Benjamin. Whereas in the case of percent super Q, it resolves to Ben and Jerry. And as I said to you earlier, it doesn't look into macro variable reference, which is defined within a macro variable. So nothing happens in here. I know I have gone into a very long video for just macro coding. But believe me, I have just scratched the surface and there is more to this topic than what I have discussed. But these fundamentals will help you to understand macro coating better. 
Now to prepare the slides, I have taken the help of couple of papers and link for these papers I will give in the description below. That's all for this topic. If you have liked this topic, please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Thank you.